Hello, today we're talking about non-disjunction in myosis 1 versus myosis 2, which results in an abnormal chromosome count in the gametes. Beginning with non-disjunction meiosis 1, the chromosomes are lined up, the homologous chromosomes that is, on the metaphase plate during metaphase, and then when they separate during anaphase, a pair doesn't separate correctly, meaning they both go to one side of the cell. So when the cells separate in, tel uh, in the telophase, you result in three chromosomes in this cell. And this is an example. We're starting with four. It can start with any number, but human chromosomes are going to have 48 and splitting into 22, or 23 and 46, and splitting into 23, 23, and 23, and 23. However, we're beginning with four. Anyways, so this side starting with three, and then because only one went to this cell, one right there. We already know it's abnormal. Now, continuing with meiosis 2, 3 versus 3, and then 1 and 1. What does this mean for the gametes? This means that this would be N plus 1, because there is one extra chromosome. Again, N plus 1, and this would be N minus 1, and N minus 1. Normally, there should be 2, 2, 2, and 2, but because of non-disjunction here, every single gamete is a mutant. They don't have the right number of chromosomes. So that's a big thing with non-disjunction during meiosis one, is all the gametes are affected. So for a normal gamete in the human body, it would be 23 chromosomes. But because this is N plus one, 24, 24, 22, and 22. That is the bulk of non-disjunction in meiosis 1. Now, again, non-disjunction can occur in meiosis 2 instead. So, we're going to see the homologous chromosomes separating correctly in meiosis 1. And then you go down to meiosis 2, the separated cells. The chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. However, when they go through anaphase, let's say that one chromosome doesn't separate its chromatids correctly. Boom, they both go to one side, while the rest split correctly. Now, what does this mean for the gametes afterwards? Well, that means that this one, this side, moving to this gamete, would have one, two, three. This one would have only one. While here, the gametes are normal because it's unaffected from this side of the process. So, two. What does this mean for the chromosome counts? Well, as we saw with non-disjunction meiosis 1, this is going to be n plus 1, while this one is n minus 1. And these are just n. They're normal. They were unaffected. Now, there's a lot of variability with how non-disjunction can occur. It could occur twice, only once. You never know. A problem, for example, would tell you, and you'd have to be able to count the chromosomes. So what does this mean with only one separated and one chromosome affected? For example, if we're doing out of 23, n plus 1, 24, 22, and then 23, and 23. So the difference between the two is that only half of these gametes are, are faulty because it only happened in half of the process. While during this, in meiosis 1, every single one is affected, resulting in total abnormality of gametes. And that is the sum of non-disjunction. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts in this video are referencing material from this specific textbook. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during normal business hours. For more information about our services, please visit our website, www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.